Okay, when you look at that bead, how many beads do you see? Just one. Just one, good. How many strings do you see coming out of that bead? Two. Okay, and show me with your finger, where are they? Right here. What's there? Right here. And what about the closest ones to you, too? Hey there, Vision Therapy patients. Welcome back to another tutorial video to learn the Vision Therapy exercise called the Brock String. Now the Brock String is the most classic vision therapy exercise. It's been around for a long time. But the reason why is because it's such a powerful exercise for learning how to control your eyes, know where they're pointed, and giving you such valuable feedback about what your visual system is doing. The Brock String is a great tool for training our binocular system. Binocular means two eyes. In vision therapy, we're really big about using our two eyes together as a team and getting them to point in the correct position and to be able to sustain that for prolonged periods of time. The Brock String is great for training conditions such as convergence insufficiency or even strabismus, actually. It really gives you good feedback about what your eyes are doing and if they are pointed in the right direction. Ready to get this exercise set up? Let's go ahead and get our tool. So I have here with me a medical grade Brock string. This Brock string was made by the company Emergent and it's fantastic for this exercise for several reasons. First, the tautness and elasticity of the string. That actually matters in this exercise. Having it too um, elastic or bouncy could actually be distracting. Second thing about a medical grade Brock string is the diameter of the beads. As you notice, when I tip the string, the beads don't slide off. I know that seems like a little thing, but that's actually really gonna matter a lot when we do this exercise. Lastly, I have a magnetic clip here. This will hold the Brock string so I can adjust the Brock string at eye level when doing this exercise. Now, if you aren't able to get a medical grade Brock string, could you still do this exercise with just some beads and a string? You could. However, there's a couple things that you're going to want to look for. Do you see how here my beads slip? that actually can be a little bit difficult to do this exercise correct if your beads keep slipping around. Secondly, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your string is not too elastic or not too taut because we're going to make sure that the tension on the string is just right to be able to do this exercise correctly. All right, to set this exercise up, let's go ahead and get a flat surface. So I'm gonna use a whiteboard. I'm gonna to wanna to put the magnet at eye level. For level one, I'd like to just put all the beads together. So let's just start them on the back. And I'm standing about two feet away from the board. And I'm gonna put the tip of the string, I'm pinching it between my two fingers, and I'm putting it right on the tip of my nose. This is the proper way to set up the Brock string to begin with. When setting up this exercise, you wanna make sure several things. First, you wanna have the end of the string at eye level. Second, you want to have your two fingers pinch the edge of the string and put it right here at the tip of your nose. Third, you want to be standing far back enough. I'm standing about two feet. And you want to have the string taut like this and resting right on the tip of your nose like that. Alternatively, you could do this exercise with a partner like a parent or a friend and they can be holding the other end of the string while you do this exercise. That could also be very helpful because they could give you really good feedback about what your eyes are doing. So what are your eyes doing when you're doing the Brock String exercise? Well, in this exercise, we instruct patients to look at a single target. That's either a bead or a point on the string. When they're looking at that target, the right eye and left eye should be pointing at the exact same point in space. If that happens, you're actually gonna notice that the Brock String splits into two strings. One image of the string is coming from your right eye and the other image of the string is coming from your left. These strings should be meeting at the target that you're looking at. So for example, if I say, look at the green bead, if you're doing this exercise correctly, you should have one single green bead with a string coming from your right eye and a string coming from your left eye meeting exactly at that green bead. Now what's gonna happen if you're doing this exercise incorrectly? Well, let's say one eye is suppressing or shutting off during this exercise. What it's gonna look like is you'll see one green bead, but you're only gonna have one string coming into that bead. 
Another thing, if you're doing this with a parent or an observer, is you could probably see it. Both eyes should look like they're pointed in to the same spot. If the exercise is done incorrectly or the eye is being lazy, you'll see one eye pointed at the target and the other eye is wandering off. You should ask them, are you seeing two strings? Are both eyes engaged when you're doing this exercise? That should give them some good feedback to know, oh, nope, I gotta turn that other eye back on. Common mistakes that I see with the Brock string exercise. First, having your string too slack. If you're doing the exercise like this, and the string is not straight, you're not gonna get the proper feedback from this exercise that you need. Second common mistake, rushing. Part of this exercise is about gaining feedback and building up stamina. If you're going too fast rushing through this exercise, you won't be able to get the full benefit out of it. To train this exercise, I like to train it with three levels. We're gonna start with level one. Okay, patient, you ready to learn level one of the Brock string? Okay, so first of all, you're going to be sitting eye level, and I want you to take the tip of the string between your two fingers and pinch it and put it right on the tip of your nose. Okay, and I want you to make sure that the string is nice and taut, okay, so it's nice and straight like a line. Okay, next, we're only gonna focus on this first bead here, the green bead, okay? When you're looking at the green bead, I want you to um, focus your eyes on that, and I want you to tell me what you see. I see. An L, okay, so you see one L on the bead, so there's just one bead, right? How many strings do you see coming out of that bead? Two. Okay, show me with your fingers, where are they? One on that side, good, okay. So she sees two strings coming out of a single bead, that's the correct response. Now, one thing, just to check, go ahead and take your hand and just cover one eye. What happened there? No, I only see one. Mm -hmm. And which side is it coming from? It's coming from my right. Okay, you can just point with your finger. Which Is it the one on this side or the one on this side? Oh, it's this The one on that side, good. Go ahead and take your hand and cover the other eye. Now, now what do you see? Still this one. The string coming from this yeah. side. So we know that the string on your right side is actually coming from your left eye. Right? And the string on your left side was actually being seen by your right eye. Right? So that's going to be really good feedback for you because if at any time during this exercise one of those strings disappear, that's going to tell you that one of your eyes is not doing the exercise. It's shutting off or what we call suppressing. Okay? Okay, now let's go ahead and focus on this bead. So when I asked you to look at this bead, how many beads did you see? Just one. Just one. And when you're looking at this bead, as you stare at it, does it ever want to split apart into double beads? Not really. Okay, good, good. So if it does split apart into double beads, that's something that we might see in like conversions insufficiency if they're not able to keep their eyes stable or together. So that's something that we're gonna to wanna to train. For this patient, she saw it nice and single, which is great. Okay, so you're going to be looking at this green bead. And the last question I have for you, while you're looking at the green bead, where do you see the two strings meeting? Right, so where they touch? Right next to the bead, like right in front of the bead. Right in front of the bead. Would you say they touch right here? A little further back. A little further back? Yeah. Okay. So this is going to give us information about where your eyes are pointed. I told you to look at the green bead, and where those strings intersect, where they actually touch each other, is truly where your eyes are pointed. Okay, if they touch a little bit before the green bead, that means you weren't truly looking at the bead. You were looking a little bit in front of it, okay? So what I want you to try is see if you can get them to touch inside the bead. Are you able to move it? I think so. Okay, good, good. So the, the string should be coming directly outside the bead. Now I'm going to move the bead two inches forward. Now, same thing, when I move this bead, do you have a bead that's single? Yes. Okay, and are the strings intersecting inside the bead? Yes. Correct, awesome. What you're going to do is you're gonna hold that for five seconds, ready? And don't let the string slip apart, don't let the bead go into double. You ready? Okay, let's count. One, One two, two, three, four, five. Good, did everything stay there? Good, let's go two more inches forward. Step two, is the bead single? Yes. Do 
you have two strings going into it? Yes. Do you actually have two strings coming out of it too? No. Not yet? Yeah. Okay. In level one, when the beat gets close enough, the patient will actually see an X pattern with the strings. However, with the bead being this far back, they may actually only see like an A pattern at first. Okay, there has to be enough string behind the bead for them to see the string splitting out from behind the bead as well, okay? So at level two, do we have a single bead and strings are splitting coming forward? Good, are the strings intersecting inside the bead? Yes. Excellent, let's hold that for five seconds. Go ahead and count. One. Two, three, four, five. Good. Let's do our next step. Step three. Same thing. Single bead, mm -hmm. double strings. Can you actually get double strings behind it now? No, not yet. Not yet? Yeah. Okay. And so keep trying. If they never see strings, double strings behind it, that could actually indicate that they're getting a little bit of suppression behind the bead. So watch out for that as well. Okay, so hold that for five seconds for me. One, two, three, four, five. Next one. Single bead? Yes. Double strings? Yes. How about in the back? I do see two strings. Good, good, awesome. Okay, and it should look like the X, like a, the strings are making an X pattern now, and it should look like the center of the X is in the center of the bead. Do you get that? Yes. Excellent. Hold that for five seconds. One, two, three, Four, five. Up ten. One, two, three, four, five. Really good. All right, go ahead and rest. Okay, now when you were on step ten, right, did your eyes feel different than when we were at step one? I did feel them crossing. Good. Yeah. Okay, good. And um, could you feel it anywhere around your eyes that you felt any kind of like tension or tightness? Yeah, just a bit. Okay, where would you say it was? Was it here, uh, here? In the middle. In the middle, excellent. So what you just did there is you were practicing converging your eyes, which is bringing your eyes together. Did you notice that the bead was slipping apart or going double when it was so close? Yeah. Yeah, okay, and what did you do to try to keep it together? Try to keep my eyes focused on the bead. Beautiful, excellent. So keeping your eyes focused is a great trick. Now let's say that this patient was really actually having a tough time at this level, like back here, Typically, it's easier when the bead is further away, but when it gets closer, it's a stronger convergence um, skill that she has to work on. So it could be harder for her to keep the bead together. So let's talk about some tricks that can help. So let's pretend that at this point, you were having trouble keeping it single, right? So one trick I would teach you is I would say, okay, well, why don't you go ahead and take your finger, and you can go ahead and lightly just tap the bead there, okay? So by tapping the bead, you're using your hand to guide your eyes to say, okay, look here, look at this. Okay, another thing that can help is blinking, right? So if you're blinking and really concentrating, that could also help you to keep this beat single. So to summarize for level one of the Brock string, you're gonna have the patient take 10 steps forward with the bead, holding for five seconds every step. Each time I move the bead, I'm moving it about two inches. Once you get to the front, you're on step 10, you're going to have them again do 10 steps back holding each bead for a total of five seconds until they get to the end. Okay, patients, so now we're going to talk about level two of the Brock string. So now I've introduced three beads here, ready? So what I want you to do is I want you to look at this closest bead right here. Okay, when you look at that bead, how many beads do you see? Just one. Just one, good. How many strings do you see coming out of that bead? Two. Okay, and show me with your finger, where are they? Right here What's there? and right here. And what about the closest ones to you too? Right here and right here. Good, okay. So when you're looking at the green bead, I want you to also, without moving your eyes, tell me how many beads you notice in the background. I see two yellow and two red beads. Uh-huh. Which ones are further apart? Or further uh, spaces apart? The red beads. The red beads, okay. And so when, this is actually correct, when you are looking at the green bead, both the yellow and the red bead should be double. That's actually giving us good feedback that both eyes are turned on in this exercise. Now let's say that the center of the X was not crossing on the yellow bead. Let's say that it was crossing back here. This would tell us that your eyes are actually, you thought you were looking at the yellow bead, but they're actually looking back here. It's like they're a little inaccurate in where they're pointed. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to move up your fixation to get the strings to cross on the yellow. 
Even though that might feel like you're looking up here, that's actually the proper way to fixate on this yellow bead. Okay, now when you're on the yellow bead, let's talk about the other beads. So looking at the yellow is this one single. Yes. Can you tell me how many green beads there are? There are two. Uh-huh, show me where they are. Right here. here. Perfect. Keeping your eyes on the yellow bead, how many red beads in the background? Two. Show me where they are. One there and one there. Excellent. So she's experiencing physiological diplopia. That's a normal um, visual phenomenon that she should be seeing. That means that whatever she's not looking at is looking double, but the target that she is exactly looking at should be single. That's perfect. Let's jump your eyes to the red bead now. Now that you're on the red bead, how many beads do you see? One. Okay. And what do the strings look like now? There are two strings uh -huh. coming towards me. Okay, good. And then how many of these yellow beads are, appear? Two. How many of the green beads appear? Two. Uh-huh. Which ones are spread further apart? The green ones. The green ones, good. Uh-huh. So now that she's looking at the red bead, she sings a single red bead, but the yellow split double and the green split double even a little further apart. This is the correct posture of the eyes when you're doing this exercise. Okay, now that we've established that you see it correctly when you look at the green and at the yellow and at the red, let's go ahead and start the exercise. So we're going to do reps. We're gonna be looking at each bead for a total of five seconds. When you're looking at the bead, you wanna make sure the bead is not splitting double, and you also wanna make sure you're getting that proper intersection of your strings, okay? All right, let's start at the green bead. Go ahead and say the color out loud for me and count to five. Green, one, two, three, four, five. Next, yellow. Yellow, one, two, three, four, five. Red, one, two, three, four, five. So in summary, for level two of the Brock string, we're going to be having three beads spaced about a foot apart. You're gonna have the patient practice jumping from one bead to the next holding them for a total of five seconds. If they can jump forward and back, that counts as one rep. See how many reps you can do. So ready? Go ahead and um, put the string up to the tip of your nose. Okay, so we're gonna be doing this level of bug on a string. So what I want you to do is I want you to hold, look at this spot on the string and see if you can get the strings intersecting at that point. Can you do that? Yes. Okay, I want you to hold that for five seconds. One, two, three, four, Five. Now we're going to jump our eyes two inches forward, okay? So the bug has crawled to this point on the string now. Okay, I want you to hold your strings at this point, intersecting at this point for five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Now when you were doing that, were your strings holding steady? No, it was actually slipping back and forth. Slipping back and forth, okay. So that is a common thing that can happen in level three of the Brock string, is when you're trying to hold that point, she sees it slipping either back or forth. That's giving us good feedback that's telling her the posture of her eyes is not steady. So we need to talk about some tips on how we can make that stronger. So if her eyes tend to be slipping back and forth, one thing that we can do, or that I coach patients, is I say, okay, well, let's pick where on the string you're focusing. So let's say that the X is sliding back and forth. I'm gonna actually have you reach out your fingers, so go ahead and point to this spot on the string. That's gonna give you motor feedback of where, um, where your eyes should be postured. Okay, so now that you're looking at that, another thing I like to say is I'll say, pretend like your bug is sitting right here, right here on the tip of your string. Does that help you to get it more stable? Yeah. Okay, and now that you're able to keep that X from slipping back and forth, now you can go ahead and resume counting. So a common mistake in level three is they're going through the motions, they're seeing it, but their eyes are not stable. A lot of uh, our goal of this level is really stability and eye control. This is the best exercise for being able to track the correct controlled posture of our eyes. So to summarize, level three of the Brock string, remember we're imagining that there's an imaginary bug. We're taking 10 steps forward on the string they're doing it with their eyes alone, holding it for five seconds at every point, and then doing 10 steps back. Thanks for joining us to learn the Brock String exercise. If you want to learn more about vision therapy, check out our website at insightvisionoc.com. I look forward to seeing you soon.